All right, now that we have finished up the, the visual component of our senses, uh, we want to look at uh, all the other senses, non-visual, uh, which obviously include uh, aud audition, uh, auditory, uh, hearing sound, uh, which are sound waves and, and uh, move through our ears, and we'll look through those specifically, and then other senses, which include touch, taste, smell, body position and movement, um, and how those are actually laid out for us or wired for us to be able to function in our world um, in a very rich sort of way. And essentially, uh, all that information gets passed along and processed by our brain. So let's, let's start out here initially, and I'll just label this as non-visual uh, because that's really everything other than that. And uh, we'll start with uh, the auditory sense first. And again, as I'm prone to do, I like to uh, de define some of our terms. And audition is not something you do in order to get into a play, at least in our, um, in our uh, context. Audition is simply uh, the act of hearing. And it is far more complex, obviously, than I think most of us really realize. And the one thing that I want to connect for you, um, and I mentioned this the last time, is that there's a lot of similarity between uh, vision and audition. And one of the major uh, crossover points in, in terms of these two really is um, the, the presence of waves and how we process them uh, similarly and yet differently. Uh, we have the electromagnetic um, spectrum that is um, part of uh, the light waves that we process. And then you have the sound spectrum, um, which is also uh, waves as well that goes from very quiet uh, to very in intense uh, sounds. And so with light, like we mentioned before, when we're talking about light, we uh, are talking about, just like I said, is the, the waves. And how closely packed together these waves are um, is the frequency. So we go from one wave where it hits to another wave and how many actually fall within this area. If there's more than the two that I drew, then you usually have a brighter, um, a brighter light. Uh, plus, we talk about the amplitude, the, the depth of this wave, and what it does in terms of um, uh, the, the nature of the light, if you will, the intensity of it, which oftentimes we refer to as the hue. So we've got the brightness intensity, and then we have the hue or color that comes into play with the amplitude. The same thing with sounds. Um, and sound waves function exactly the same way. Concepts are very similar. And as this diagram makes it clear, uh, you have the short wavelength. So it, it, it means that how many are packed in here are the short is a high pitched sound. If it is long and, and um, uh, they're farther apart, this is the frequency. So it's not necessarily how many are in here, but well, how short this, uh, how quickly the wave hits again is part of the frequency element uh, to it. If it's a long period of time, which is long in relative terms when we're talking about sound, um, is a low pitched when it's closer together, and that's the key here, is how closely uh, together these two peaks of the sound waves are. Same with amplitude. Uh, the deeper this amplitude, the louder it is, the sh shallower it is, the softer. And so what's interesting to take note of is uh, with uh, sirens, is what happens with sirens. And many emergency uh, vehicles actually have two different kinds of sirens to uh, depending on their surroundings. The question would be for you to consider uh, which sound wave as a siren, because it's usually a, a 
oscillating sound. You have the <coughs> sorry, uh, the the up and down uh, uh, siren, and then you have a very long, low uh, oscillating sound, rather than the very quickly um, uh, the quick sounding one. And I'll I'll put each of these in here so you can see that hear them. Um, but these sirens are different for rural areas. Why? Because there's not very many buildings for the sound wave to um, to uh, bounce off of. And then the urban environment and the sound waves are very different there. So each one, um, in order to get people's attention, they adjust it to adjust to how our uh, how we process sound in, in terms of getting our attention. Now the other thing I want to keep and bring to your attention really is the frequency and amplitude and how it plays into something we do every day. Um, in, on your radio you have two different bands. One is FM, which is probably what you spend the most time listening to, and for those of us that like talk radio and things like that is AM. Well. What's the difference? What's the difference between these? And essentially, in AM, this refers to amplitude modulation. So, in other words, the radio station, in sending out its signal, is assigned by the FCC a certain amplitude. Um, and so, essentially, how deep of, of the wave, if you will, is, is part of their signal is, for example, 850 has a particular amplitude modulation to it. Uh, 630 is different. And each one is, has a different wave signal or signature. Um, in FM, it's frequency modulation. And when we began to... Um, when we began to uh, uh, play around with, if you will, how many of, or how close together, or how packed together these waves are, we had a frequency FM, and FM is incredibly uh, more uh, high def, if you will, than AM. All we had was AM way back in the Stone Age, but FM, when it added, you were able to hear things in music that you never could hear in amplitude. And some of that is because look at how much more data comes at you. Uh, for example, uh, 101, uh, 100, uh, I think that's mixed radio. Well, that tells you how, ma how, many, how much time is ex expand or occurs between one wave hitting and the next. And that is part of... Uh, how much information then can get passed on when you hear uh, things on an FM, a well-tuned FM radio, you can hear things that you wouldn't otherwise hear, ever hear an AM radio. And that's usually why uh, with AM it's all about uh, talk. You don't hear very many stations using uh, music or doing music on AM. But we've got a lot of mixed things occurring now because we can now have internet radio, which means that we're not really dependent on um, uh, the radio signal itself. Now we're using wireless um, and cellular data that impacts uh, the, uh, um, what I want to say, the, def the, or the um, clarity of the information coming across. You have more and more people like Sirius uh, satellite radio. Uh, you can add satellite in here as well. And that we're getting data in a lot of different ways now that we never did before. And there used to be that AM was it. That was all we had really to get information. And uh, that was part of the uh, revolution really of FM because all the music stations moved to FM because of the uh, intense level of clarity and um, definition that you could have in that. But my point is this, is that uh, frequency and amplitude are part everyday parts of our lives, not just in uh, how we listen to things, but uh, even in the radio signals we listen to, this, this up until a certain point in time, these things were kind of abstract things that we understood about the, the, the sound wave. 
now, because of understanding this, you can now have a new appreciation for how radio actually works and is built on how we hear, because that is the, the uh, process through which we uh, process that information.